As laboratory personnel, the blood incubation, ELISA and data analysis sections may particularly pertain to you. Upon receiving blood samples in the lab, it is important to note the incubation status of the tubes. Have the tubes been shipped prior to incubation or after incubation? If the tubes have been shipped directly to the laboratory prior to incubation and within 16 hours of collection, remixing of the tubes is required immediately before incubation. This is to ensure a redistribution of the lymphocytes within the blood. This is achieved by inverting the tubes 10 times, as demonstrated here. Proper mixing will ensure that the entire inner surface of the tubes is coated with blood. Over-energetic shaking of the tubes can result in the gel dislodging and mixing into the blood. This can cause erroneous results and must be avoided. From the time of blood collection to incubation, it is important to maintain tubes between 17 and 27 degrees Celsius or 63 and 81 degrees Fahrenheit. Temperatures outside this range may cause erroneous results. Tubes are then placed upright in a 37 degrees Celsius incubator for 16 to 24 hours. For the incubation process, any standard 37 degrees Celsius incubator can be used. The incubator does not require carbon dioxide or humidification. Following incubation, the blood collection tubes can be held between 4 and 27 degrees Celsius or 40 and 81 degrees Fahrenheit for up to three days. Upon receiving incubated tubes from the clinic, it is necessary to confirm that the tube was shipped within three days of the incubation process. Following incubation, either at the clinic or within the laboratory, the blood collection tubes are ready for the plasma separation step. Plasma separation involves centrifuging the tubes at 2000 to 3000 RCF for 15 minutes. The gel plug will separate the plasma from the cells, enabling easy removal of plasma. The plasma may appear more red than usual. Light hemolysis does not impact the performance of the test. After centrifugation, plasma samples can be pipetted directly into the 96-well ELISA plate for further analysis. Alternatively, the tubes containing plasma can be stored for up to 28 days in the refrigerator at 2 to 8 degrees Celsius or 36 to 46 degrees Fahrenheit. The plasma can also be separated and frozen below minus 20 degrees Celsius or minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit for extended periods. QFT ELISA is used to measure the amount of interferon gamma within each plasma sample. Automated platforms allow direct plasma sampling from the tubes and the ELISA to be performed with minimal operator input. If performing the QFT ELISA manually, the recommended equipment includes pipettes, a microplate shaker, microplate washer and a microplate reader. Components of the QFT ELISA kit are stored as per package instructions. The ELISA box is stored in the refrigerator between 2 and 8 degrees Celsius or 36 to 46 degrees Fahrenheit and should be returned to the refrigerator after each use.
Prior to commencing the ELISA, all reagents except the 100 times conjugate concentrate must be equilibrated to room temperature. This will take approximately one hour. Plasma samples should also be at room temperature. When using a kit for the first time, the conjugate concentrate and the freeze-dried standard both need to be reconstituted. For the conjugate, add 300 microliters of distilled water to the vial. and mix gently to avoid frothing. The conjugate vial should be immediately returned to the refrigerator. The kit standard contains human interferon gamma, which should be reconstituted with the volume of distilled water indicated on the label of the vial. This volume may be different for each batch of Quantiferon TB Gold ELISA kits. Mix gently to avoid frothing. Reconstitution of the standard to the correct volume will produce a solution with a final concentration of 8 international units of interferon gamma per milliliter. The wash buffer is a 20 time concentrate. It should be prepared by diluting one part of wash buffer concentrate with 19 parts distilled water and mixing thoroughly. Enough concentrate has been provided to allow for 1 litre of working strength buffer per ELISA plate. Once diluted, the working strength wash buffer can be stored at room temperature for up to two weeks. It is good practice to write the date of reconstitution on the ELISA box. Reconstituted reagents can be used for up to three months from this date. Prior to performing the ELISA, sufficient working strength reagents need to be prepared. The conjugate is 100 times concentrated and needs to be diluted to working strength using green diluent. The package insert indicates the appropriate volumes to be prepared for the number of ELISA plate strips required. Mix the correct volumes of conjugate concentrate and green diluent together thoroughly but gently to avoid frothing. The conjugate concentrate vial must be immediately returned to the refrigerator. Working strength conjugate must be used within six hours of its preparation. The standards are used to control the quality of the assay. Therefore, accuracy of preparation is essential. Within the US, the FDA-approved 8-point curve is recommended. The 4-point curve is also widely used. The standards must be run at least in duplicate on each ELISA plate. In some cases, the standards may also be run in triplicate. Use the reconstituted kit standard to produce a dilution series of eight concentrations in order to generate an eight-point curve. Start by labelling eight tubes S1 through S8. 
add 150 microliters of green diluent to the seven tubes labeled S2 through S8. Add 300 microliters of the kit standard to tube labelled S1. Perform serial dilutions by transferring 150 microliters of the kit standard in S1 to S2 and mix thoroughly. Then transfer 150 microliters from S2 to S3. Mix thoroughly and so on until you reach tube S7. Remember not to transfer anything into tube S8. It contains only green diluent as it serves as the zero standard. The undiluted kit standard in S1 serves as the highest concentration at 8 international units per milliliter. Set the standards aside for use in the ELISA reaction steps. Use the reconstituted kit standard to produce a dilution series of four concentrations in order to generate a four-point curve. Start by labelling four tubes S1 through S4. Add 150 microliters of green diluent to the tubes S1, S2, S3 and S4. Add 150 microliters of the kit standard to tube labelled S1 and mix thoroughly. Perform serial dilutions by transferring 50 microliters of S1 to S2 and mix thoroughly. Then transfer 50 microliters from S2 to S3 and mix thoroughly. Remember not to transfer anything into tube S4. It contains only green diluent as it serves as the zero standard. The undiluted kit standard in S1 serves as the highest concentration at 4 international units per milliliter. Set the standards aside for use in the ELISA reaction steps. Standards can be run in duplicate or triplicate. Please refer to your package insert if you wish to follow the recommended layout for the standards.